exercise 11. In this exercise, we're going to learn how to take and create a sheet metal part. So we begin with this exercise by actually opening up an assembly. And we're going to learn a little bit about the sheet metal tools that are built into SOLIDWORKS. So let's take a look at this now. So we begin by going to File, Open, and find your Manufacturing 2202 Sample Files and Exercise 11. Make sure under Files of Type that it's set up to look for your assembly file. And you'll find the E11 assembly. Go ahead and open it. If you get a message like this, just hit OK. If it asks you to rebuild it, go ahead and hit yes. Okay, you'll notice that there's already a cover on it. We are going to model this cover new. So let's go ahead, we'll just click on it, and there's an option to hide component. Go ahead and select that. Now we begin by going to insert a new part. This is top-down assembly modeling. So we go to New Part and select your front plane to drop it in on. Now the front plane just so happens to be aligned to this surface here at the end of uh, this face right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to steal the edges off of the casting in the rear. So we go ahead and select that face. And now you can go ahead and hit Convert Entities. And once you convert it, you'll see the profile of your, your enclosure. Now we could go ahead and go to Features and go to Extrude Boss Face. At this point, you could go ahead and select where you want to drop it up to. So we want to use Up to Vertex and select this corner. You don't even have to select Up to Vertex from the dialog on the left because as soon as you select that corner, it'll extrude up to it. Go ahead and hit the Apply button. Okay, now what we're going to do is we need to turn this into a sheet metal part. So let's go ahead and open this up by itself. Just simply right click on it, on the model, and you'll find the open part option at the top here. Little folder with a green arrow on it. And then zoom to fit using your F key or zoom to fit the icon. Alright, now what we have to do is we have to go ahead and shell this out. Shell out the areas that are going to be open. So we go ahead and we uh, need to bring up our sheet metal tools. So right click on any icon and find sheet metal. And then your toolbar should appear. I'm just going to drag it out here. Okay, so before, before we do that actually we have to shell it. So let's go and select the shell icon and you're going to shell it at Okay, so basically what we want to do here is shell it out. So let's go ahead and select the shell tool. And we'll go with um, 0 0.06 for 60 thousandths. And we'll select these faces. The ones that are in, the, uh, in an isometric view would be this front, all these front faces. And then rotate it just a little bit to the right and get this face. And that's it, just those four faces. Okay, And you want to select shell outward on the taskbar there on the left and hit apply. Okay, there it is. It should look like this. If, you, if it looks a little different, go back by right clicking on the shell command and edit it and you probably selected the wrong face by accident. So not a big deal. You could deselect it and redo it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and turn this into a sheet metal part. So what we need to do is select a fixed face. The fixed face is where basically everything is going to fall apart from. Or tear away from. So th in this case, this face will be our fixed face. We just click on it and then we go to insert bends. Now the bend radius will put in, um, we'll leave it at 10 thousandths. Uh, you have K factor, bend table, bend allowance, and bend deduction. We're just going to go with K factor. If you want more information on these, you could click on the little question mark and it will bring up the information regarding K factor. So you could type in K here, 
bring up k-factor and you can see the equations that go into calculating that information. All right, and then when it comes to auto relief, what that's going to do is like in a corner, for example, it's going to cut it out a little section so it could pull these two faces apart. And there's two, there's three options, rectangular, tear, and abron. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment, but we'll leave it at rectangular and at 0.5 for the relief ratio. And then the rip parameters. And here we get to select what we need to rip apart. In other words, these edges here, because right now they're, they're contacting. So we click in this box, select this edge here, and select this edge here. Now you'll see that there's these arrows that are pointing out. What that means is that if you were to take a, a saw and glide it along this face as a guide, it would be cutting out this face over here. So we'd have a little gap. And the gap distance right now is set to 10,000, so we could change that if we needed to. Or we could hit change direction, and then our little saw would follow this face here and go in. Or else we could hit change direction again. When you see two, that indicates that it's going to just completely notch out the corner. And that's what we'll choose. So we'll click on edge two and edge one and hit change direction until we got both notched out. And now we could go ahead and hit apply. You'll get a little message. This isn't a warning message. It's just saying auto relief cuts were made for one or more bends. And now we have a sheet metal part. Over here we have uh, the option to flatten it. This little icon here under sheet metal tools, if you click on that, we can see it flattened. And if we zoom up to that corner, you can see the rectangular relief cut. If we rotate around, you can see what it did here because we have notched out the complete edge. Now let's say we wanted to change that. Uh, depending upon the sheet metal industry you're working in, I used to do some sheet metal design for stainless steel countertops that would be used in like a McDonald's or even Popeye's chicken. And basically what we want to do maybe is um, in those cases you can't have a notch in the corner because organic material could get trapped while they're wiping the countertop down. And so what we would do is we would have a rip cut. And let's see how a rip cut looks. By right clicking on the sheet metal icon to the left in the uh, feature tree, we could go ahead and click on edit feature. And now we have the auto auto relief, we could go ahead and select tear and hit the green check mark. And now you could see what this has done. Okay. Um, let's actually change the rip parameters on this and see how it affects that, the update. So to change it, we could you'll see rip as a feature on the tree. Right click on that and edit feature. And then you can just click on the arrowheads to change the direction that you want. And we'll go ahead and we'll follow that edge. And we'll hit the green check mark. And take a look at the rip parameter. It's because it ripped the corner, it actually simulates as if there was a, a solid geometry there and it was just bent and ripped at the same time. If we rotate around, you can see the effect that our, uh, um, our rip parameters selected. Okay, we'll just leave it at that for right now. And we could go back to our assembly. If you hold the control key and hit tab on your keyboard, you could toggle between them. If it asks you, uh, would you like to update the model now? Yes. And there is our sheet metal part. Let's take a look at a couple other functions. You'll find you have a little library books over here on, on the right in the design library. If this doesn't come up, right click and you'll find the option to bring up um, one of these. I'll, go, I'll come back to it actually. It's um, one of the options brings this toolbar up. And we want to go to the design library. And we're going to go to the uh, design library, the little books at the top, and look for forming tools. And let's look for louvers. And SolidWorks has uh, just a couple of these files in here. They have a louver. In this case, you can modify it if you'd like. Uh, but basically, the way they work, you just grab them with the left mouse button held down. You drag them onto the surface you want to drop them onto. And then the tab key on your keyboard will flip the direction. It'll pop it in or out. So that's the tab key before you release this. Then once you release it, you could, uh, right here allows you to modify the sketch. So if you want to add dimensions, you could go to the Smart Dimension tool and dimension off of edges and things like that to locate it. 
you can also rotate it. And to rotate it under Tools, Sketch Tools, you'll find Modify. Click on Modify. And, uh, oh, I must, oh, it's because I dimensioned it. Let me delete the dimension there. Let's try that again. Oop. Tools, Sketch Tools, Modify. Yeah, as long as it doesn't have a dimension attached to it, you can actually modify it. You'll see the little symbol of your mouse, left mouse button is to pan, right is to rotate. Or else you can type in an explicit value in the Modify Sketch dialog box. So if I type the 90 and hit Enter on my keyboard, you can see I could rotate it 90, 90 degrees. I could also translate it X and Y values, or I could scale it or factor right above there. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Close, and then I could drag and relocate this. Now I could add my dimensions. To finish it off. And then hit finish when you're done. And there's your louver. Now we'll go ahead and we'll pattern that. Go to the features and we could go to linear pattern, select an edge for the vector, and let's reduce the number here to three and increase the spacing and we could hit the reverse direction button here at the top left and hit apply. And so we've added some movers. There's also a, a, a number of other tools in there that you can select from. There's lances, extruded flanges, embosses. Let's grab the dimple. We'll drag that on there. And the tab key will pop it in there out. Okay. The next thing that we might want to do here is uh, get the holes for the screws on here uh, cut out. So I could just select this top face to start a sketch, and then we could go to wireframe. And now we could see the actual edges of the holes. We could select them, hit convert entities, or offset if you want it a little bit bigger. And then you could go to features, extrude cut. Now, when you extrude cut inside an assembly, you uh, a sheet metal assembly, you could actually link it to the thickness of the sheet metal part versus going through all because sometimes sheet metal comes all the way around and you don't want to cut through both sides necessarily. So there we go. Okay, another little additional feature I'd like to show you here on the sheet metal tools. Let's go ahead and bring them up. I'm gonna um, right click on any icon, find the sheet metal tools. And there's several tools here to choose from. One of them we'll go ahead and select is Edge Flange. Edge Flange allows you to select an edge and automatically drag off a flange from it. And you can select a vertex or corner to go up to. And on the left, there's lots of options you could go through. You could see that you could uh, adjust the flange position. You want material inside, material outside, bend outside, or bend from virtual sharp. You can also edit the flange profile. See this button over here on the left? Click on that and now you could actually move this out of the way and you could drag this sketch and move it wherever you want. You could add dimensions to it. And you could also add additional sketch geometry to it. In this case I'll add a, a center line in the middle and I'll grab that center line after I select Sketch and lock it into here. I unfortunately didn't grab the, the center or the midpoint, so let's go ahead and um, make that a midpoint relationship. And now I could lock it in centered, and then I could select this edge and hit Convert Entities and hit Finish. And we've just added a little flange. I'll do that one more time. We can select this edge, go to Edge Flange, drag it out to a vertex, hit edge, Edit Flange Profile, drag the geometry down and up, add your dimension, and also you could use Convert Entities to select the hole. and hit finish. Okay, now just to show you this, um, this is set to rip right now. 
let's go back and edit that. If we go ahead and we edit the sheet metal by right clicking on it, and we click on edit feature from the tree, we could actually, um, instead of tear, we could select Abron. Let's see what Abron does. What Abron does is it create these little Abron cutouts for a relief. So sometimes you'll see that depending upon if you're using uh, dyes to punch these out or a laser or plasma. You could change it to rectangular, which is just straight cuts, or tear, or abron. All right, that finishes our enclosure. Let's go ahead and open it up by itself for a second just to take a look. And there it is by itself. We could click on flatten, and we could see it in its flattened state. Go ahead and we'll save it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go right to File, Make Drawing from Part. Uh, actually, it's set up as a virtual component. I have to go to File, Save As first. And I'm going to save this as the uh, E11 cover. And now I could go back to File, Make Drawing from Part. Choose the actually, I'll choose a very large size, maybe a um, D size. Hit OK. And now there's our flat pattern. We can just drag it in, and we have our flat pattern view. If we want to see additional views, we can maybe bring in an isometric view. Oh, actually, let me cancel this and bring another one in. there it is. Okay, that finishes this exercise 11. Thank you.